This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. My name is John Moffat, and this is the first in a series of lectures looking through financial management. Uh, and this first chapter of our uh, free lecture notes, and do make sure you've downloaded the lecture notes because in later chapters when we come to all the calculations uh, I'll not only be explaining what's happening but working through examples that are in the lecture notes but this first chapter is just an introduction really to the exam and to the syllabus uh, and before I go through it although there are a lot of calculations coming in later chapters do appreciate Approximately only 50% of the exam is arithmetic, some of which very easy and you'll enjoy, some of which is quite a bit messy and needs a lot of practice. But only 50%, the other 50% is effectively written either in section C, where it's long form questions, perhaps part A of the question will be some arithmetic, part B of the question will be talking about it or explaining something, it will be written, or in the uh, multiple choice type questions in sections A and B. Some questions, yes, will involve arithmetic, but other questions I always call written. But you know, which of the following statements is true? Well, there's no arithmetic involved but it's the testing that you understand what's happening. So as you go through uh, this series of lectures, you will find that in some lectures I do talk a lot as opposed to arithmetic, and I'm not doing it for fun. It's because, you know, they really do check you understand what's happening, not just that you can learn a few rules or a few formulae. And I say this is really introduction to the syllabus. Uh, and you will see on this one page the four key areas that the financial manager is concerned with, which obviously we're going to go through in detail uh, in all the later lectures. Because the financial manager is much more concerned about the long term position of the company. You know, we're not interested in the financial accountant. Financial accountant effectively is reporting what happened last year, what was last year's profit, what was last year's loss. Uh, we're not interested in the management accountant, paper F5, because the management accountant is looking much more at the short term. Budgets for next year, uh, decisions uh, about what price to charge next year, and so on. Financial manager is more concerned with the long term. And there are four main areas that they're concerned with. One is the raising of long-term finance. A company needs money to expand. Uh, if we want to um, build a new factory, we're going to have to raise finance in order to be able to afford the factory. And of course, how can we raise long-term finance? We can raise money from shareholders, issue shares, or we can take out long-term loans. Uh, well, again, cover it all in later chapters, but you are expected to know about different ways of raising money, different ways of getting money from shareholders, different ways of taking long-term loans. And of course, one factor in deciding how to raise money um, it's looking at how much it costs, you know, the interest you're going to have to pay. You want to borrow money in the cheapest way. Well, there there are lots of calculations about working out the cost of our long-term money. Um, a second uh, big area for the exam is what we call the investment decision. And what I mean here by investments, I said a minute ago, if we're going to build a new factory and need half a million, then OK, we need to decide where the money's coming from. But equally, we need to decide, is this a good investment or isn't it? You know, shall we buy this factory or shan't we? 
Or maybe they're thinking of buying a new machine, which will cost 100,000. Is it worth buying the machine or isn't it? You know, what returns do we expect? Is it a good pro project? We'll go ahead with it, or is it a bad project? And so it's different ways we can go about making that sort of decision. Uh, by far the most important way is something you should have heard of on paper F2, which is discounted cash flow or net present values. But again, I'll go through all the details, a lot of it in fact, uh, in later chapters. A third area, the management of working capital. Uh, by working capital, we're talking about current assets, uh, current liabilities, receivables, inventories, payables. Well, although in some sense an amount of short term isn't there, it's important, it's the financial manager's job to develop policies for the long term management. What I'm getting at is things like receivables. I think sensibly, uh, if we sell on credit, we want to get customers to pay as soon as possible. The quicker they pay, the better. But the question is, how do we go about getting them to pay quickly? We need to develop a policy. You know, maybe a way of getting them to pay quickly will offer them a discount if they pay quick. Well, it's up to the financial manager to decide what our policy should be and how much discount we should give them, but how much can we afford? That sort of thing. So, yet again, there are many chapters on managing working capital. Uh, there's a lot that can be examined. Uh, the final major area, and I'm certainly not listing obviously every single topic in the syllabus here, but um, the management of risk. And we're really talking about two main types of risk. One is if we do a lot of trading abroad, if we're in the UK and we're buying goods from an American supplier who wants paying in dollars, then we're at risk due to the fact that exchange rates change. You know, today there may be ooh, $2 to the pound, but by the time I come to pay for my goods, it could have changed. It could be one and a half dollars to the pound. And so there is risk due to exchange rate movements. Well, the financial manager's job is to decide how we're going to manage that risk, how we're going to reduce the risk. Uh, and again, there are lots of ways you're expected to be aware of of dealing with the risk. Uh, the other main aspect of risk, which again, dealt with in a later chapter, uh, it's what we call interest rate risk, that if we're borrowing money, then okay, we may be borrowing, the, the interest rate at the moment may be 10%, let's say. But clearly interest rates change, and interest rates may be higher, may be lower. But whether they're higher or lower, the fact they, they're going to change creates risk. Well, again, it's looking at ways in which we can manage that risk, reduce the risk. So that in a nutshell is the main things we are going to consider. It doesn't sound much there, but as you'll see as we go through, uh, F9 is a very demanding paper. Most of the calculations aren't too bad, and there's a huge formula sheet. So it's not a question of having to learn lots of formulae. You're given the formula sheet in the exam. Um, but although most of the calculations aren't that bad, some of them are a bit tricky. But even ignoring those, there are so many different areas within those four main areas. There's so many different topics with an awful lot to get through. And similarly, as I said before, only 50% is arithmetic. So there's a lot to think about. There's a lot, you'll see as you go through the lectures, there are a lot of chapters, a lot of lectures on each one of those areas. 
because there's so many different things can be asked under each heading. So there we are, I think, it's just an introduction to what's coming.